Have you ever wondered the difference between an independent variable and a dependent variable? I mean, seriously, what's the difference? Well, in this video, if you have seven minutes, we can teach you that difference. And make sure you stick around to the end so we can give you some testing strategies too. Hey, it's Dr. Pamela Kreiser here at the Research Methods Crash Lab. We're here not only to help you survive your methods class, but we're here to help you thrive. Now, if you hate math, you've come to the right place because here at the Crash Lab, we're ready to help everybody. Let's head into the lab. Today, we're going to talk about independent and dependent variables. And the focus will be on understanding how these operate in research. Now, to keep it simple, we're gonna use examples that have just one independent variable and one dependent variable, even though sometimes research projects will involve many variables. Let's start with dependent variables. In research, dependent variables are highly important because this is the variable the researcher is trying to explain or predict. Often the dependent variable is associated with the purpose of the study, and this is thought to depend upon or be influenced by the other variables in the study. So the researcher measures the changes on the dependent variable because of this dependency. In research, the independent variable is also important because this is the variable the researcher manipulates in the research study. This is the variable that does the influencing. Some examples will help us understand these two variables. So let's start by looking at examples of how the independent and the dependent variable operate in difference testing. Let's say you had the belief that there was a significant difference in calorie consumption between someone who was an adult and someone who was a child. If we were to write a two-tailed hypothesis, we might suggest that adults and children will differ significantly in the total number of calories they consume per day. Now, by definition, we know this hypothesis expresses the researcher's prediction about the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. The dependent variable is calorie consumption per day. The independent variable is age group, adults versus children. This is a two-tailed hypothesis because of the word differ. This indicates the researcher's belief that the groups will be significantly different, but it doesn't specify which group will be higher or lower. In other words, it could go either way, either of the two ways. So we call it two-tailed. Going back to our diagram, we can see how the independent variable age group explains and predicts the dependent variable consumption of calories per day. Here's another example. Have you ever wondered if watching violent films makes a person more fearful of violent crime? Let's say you wanted to research this and you decided to form a one-tailed hypothesis. The hypothesis would be that individuals who watch violent films will report significantly higher fear of violent crime than those who watch nonviolent films. The dependent variable is fear of violent crime, and the independent variable is film exposure, whether you watch violent films or you don't. Going back to our diagram, we can see how the independent variable film exposure explains and predicts the dependent variable reported fear of violent crime. The researcher would have to determine how to measure this dependent variable. The researcher might have the individuals complete a survey where they indicate their fear level. The individual's fear score is the measurement of the dependent variable. The researcher would also have to manipulate the independent variable. And this is where the researcher would manipulate or handle or control the subjects into two groups. So you're not manipulating people, you're manipulating who's in what group, those who watch violent films and those who don't. Notice that these are not two independent variables, but there are two groups within a single independent variable called film exposure. So far in this video, we've identified two examples of difference tests. We looked at differences between adults and children in their calorie consumption, and we also looked at difference in reported fear of violent crime according to film exposure. Notice that in both of these examples of difference, there was the presence of a categorical independent variable. By this we mean the researcher manipulated the independent variable by forming groups. For difference testing, this makes sense because if you're looking for differences in the dependent variable, you would have to compare groups to find that difference. Now let's look at two more examples where independent and dependent variables operate in relationship testing. Now even though this is a relationship test, our initial diagram has not changed we are still looking at the independent variable and the dependent variable in terms of explaining and or predicting. Here is a one-tailed hypothesis. 
study hours will be a significant and positive predictor of test performance. Here we observe that the dependent variable is test performance. The independent variable is study hours. We have a one-tailed hypothesis because it's a specific positive prediction. For the second example, we will be looking at another relationship test. Our hypothesis is that reported hours of sleep will be significantly and positively related to reported levels of happiness. You will notice that this particular hypothesis uses the word related. In this example, we are looking at a correlation. Consequently, it is not as important to identify which variable is the independent and which is the dependent variable. Keep in mind that because this is a correlation, we are not able to determine a causal relationship. We can only predict that they are positively related. Remember that correlation doesn't equal causation. Our options are to predict that they are positively related, negatively related, or possibly unrelated. In our specific example, we believe they are positively related, but there are no specific identified causes. We don't know that sleep makes an individual happier or that happier individuals sleep better. We only know that they tend to move together as variables. Consequently, we predict that they are positively related or positively correlated. This means that when one variable goes up, the other tends to go up and vice versa. When one goes down, the other tends to go down. Now in this example, we can only explain how the variables are or aren't related to each other. This is why we call this inquiry a relationship test. Now in review, we've seen how independent and dependent variables might operate in both the context of difference testing as well as relationship testing. Overall, we know that understanding the basic information leads to strong foundations in research. Now earlier in this video, we promised to give you a strategy to help you improve your test scores. So you ready to take the next step? You can access our quiz me videos using the link here and test your knowledge of independent and dependent variables. Well, thanks for watching. And if you like what you saw, make sure you hit that like button down below and we'll see you in the next one.